Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another Bambino Games video. Today I've got a great announcement. I'm getting ready and I've already ordered the parts to build my own gaming PC. I'm totally psyched. I've gone through about three weeks of research, looking at this and that, this type of system, that type of system, mini ATX, regular ATX, mid tower, blah, 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 blah. motherboards, CPU, everything. I've looked at it all and I finally decided on a system. So let me talk about the goal. So the main goal is to have a screaming ass gaming PC that's going to play simulation games flawlessly with great graphics and smooth gameplay. That's the whole idea. But I also want to have the ability to expand it as new technologies come on, maybe new display technologies. I might want to, I actually have a separate system, a Mac system that I use for video editing and for, for music production. I may want to move some of that onto the system. Not sure yet, but I figured if I'm going to build a system, I'm going to build it so that I've got tons of options down the road. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go through what I picked. So first you can see here, I picked the Fractal Design Define R5 case. I've looked at hundreds of cases and this is the one I like the best, mainly because of its airflow capability, but also because it's got ridiculous amounts of options for water cooling, air cooling, different types of drives. No, you can have all solid state, you can have hard, it's just unbelievable options great reviews on it. I could use any type of motherboard in there, ATX, Micro, or Mini. So I just saw it as a very versatile platform that I could use. And it's not too big. It's only about 18 inches high, which is what I wanted. I didn't want a huge honking case. So it's really perfect for me. So this is what I settled on. And next, the most important piece to me is the motherboard. And I chose the, the Gigabyte GX Z170X UD5TH, and the TH stands for Thunderbolt. You can get it without Thunderbolt, but for 10 bucks more, you get the Thunderbolt capability. Now, why did I choose this? I'm only gonna have one graphics card to start, so why do I need all this capability? Well, and why do I need a board that has the ability to overclock? Well, I just wanted to have that just in case, and there was a couple things that really attracted me to this. One, the heat sinks look like it's really well made. Two, everyone that talked about it said it's a great, well made board. Three, the audio section is isolated, so if I ever want to use this computer for audio, there's some isolation there that would probably make it a better system for that. And it's got Thunderbolt, so in case you ever want to go the way of Thunderbolt for video or whatever options, disk, disk drives, etc., that's there. And it also has M2 support. So for a myriad of reasons, for a $189 range motherboard, this one just seems to make a lot of sense to me. Now, I'm not going to use an overclocking system, but I wanted to have the ability to do that down the road. So let's talk about the chip that I chose, the CPU. So I chose the iCore i7-6700 Skylake Quad Core. I didn't choose the 6700K because I don't really see myself overclocking, but I wanted something that supported DDR4 and I wanted something that was going to be screaming. So it's like a stock screaming uh, iCore 7 chip, right? And I actually didn't buy it from Egg. I bought it from Amazon because I saved about 20 bucks buying it from Amazon. I'm going to use the heat sink that comes with it because I'm not going to be doing any overclocking. And from everything I read, that heat sink should be fine. And if not, it's an extra 20, 30 bucks to buy a, a separate heat sink. So we're going to, I'm going with that one. And the good news is, is down the road, if I decide to get into this and, and overclock and, and I want to get an, uh, an i7-6700K, I can sell this one and get a new one because the board that I have is going to support it. So this is what I chose. Next on memory, I went with 16 gig Corsair Vengeance RAM. 16 gig, two 8 gig RAMs. I did, went to, with DDR4 2400. I thought this was fine. It's, it, it seemed like a good buy, had some good reviews. I got it for a good price. I did buy this from Newegg. Now the power supply, I looked at, oh my God, there's hundreds of power supplies you can buy. I chose this one for a couple of reasons. One, the ratings on it, 284 people bought this and it's a it's an absolute perfect five rating on this and on Amazon. Second, 10 year warranty on this power supply, okay? Third, all the reviews were super for this thing. So it's got every capability I need. I'm gonna start with one graphics card, but if I wanna go with two graphics cards, this power supply will support it. 750 watts, I'm gonna be nowhere near that. The GPU that I'm gonna be using is probably gonna be about 250, the CPU is 67. So I'm gonna be well under 750. So it's overkill for what I want, but it's there. If I wanna add another graphics card, maybe, maybe not, who knows, but I want the option, right? I wanna want that option. 
All right, so I went with this one. I actually, it's a great deal here because uh, you get a $20 mail-in rebate, which I'll mail in and I'll get 20 bucks back. So I did buy this by New from Newegg. So that's the power supply. And it's totally modular, so it's going to be hopefully easy for me to install. And let me just talk about that for a second. Now, I do have a background in computers, various areas of computing. And I used to build PCs back in the day when they weren't as modular. They're a little bit more difficult to build, but it's been a long time since I built one. So things have changed quite a bit. I've done a lot of research, and I don't think I'll have any problem building it, provided that the parts I get are solid. I follow the instructions, and I should be in good shape to do that. So it's going to be a first-time build for me with some experience to back me to make me feel comfortable that I can do it. So in any event... I chose this power supply because it looks like it has some really good cabling and it's completely modular so it's going to be real easy to connect power up to the devices I'm going to be using. And it's I don't have a lot in this system to start. And let me just talk about the the peripherals here. So I went with the SanDisk 256 gig M2 SSD because this motherboard that I purchased has a M2 SSD slot right on the motherboard. So I wanted to go with that as my boot drive. Its job is to run Windows 10, maybe some games, but probably just Windows 10 and anything system related. This is a fairly new product, but it's SanDisk. They've been around forever. I have to believe it's going to be a good product. It did have one good review on Amazon, which is actually where I bought it because I got a cheaper price for it on Amazon. It was in stock. So I, I'm taking a little bit of a risk here with, with this particular component, but for, it's 80 bucks. I'm gonna have the system set up so that if I had to have a problem, I'll be able to reconfigure pretty easily. Okay, so I feel comfortable with this. Anyway, so I went with this as my internal boot drive, if you will. So that's plenty of space for the operating system, which I'm gonna use Windows 10 Home, because I really don't need the functions of Pro. Now for my other drive, I'm gonna be using a uh, Samsung A50 Evo 500 gig and I'm actually going to be using the 500 gig that I have in my laptop currently. I'm going to basically take the um, the hard disk that I that I have that I replaced, put it back in the laptop and I'm going to reformat this and use this as my my data drive. And here I'm going to store all games, right? So I'm going to have a completely SSD system. Now I toyed with the idea of getting a a terabyte or a two terabyte hard drive for backups, but I use off-site backup, online backup, so I'm not really sure I really even really need that since this computer right now is really going to be set up only for gaming. But down the road, if I want to add uh, you know a couple terabyte hard drive, I can easily do that uh, with this system because uh, the Fractal Design R5 has plenty of space, plus the power supply that I'm getting has plenty of power to, to be able to support multiple hard drives so so this is going to be so that's going to be kind of a process having to reinstall the thing back in the laptop and then take this the one that i already have here and put it in my new system but that's okay that'll be part of the process and finally now i didn't purchase this today but uh, the graphics card that i'm eyeing to go with is the, the evga gtx 970 ti super clock gaming acx 2 plus 2.0 uh, plus easy for me to say now this is a card that's been out a while, and right now, as you probably know, we have a little kind of a flux in the in the graphics card industry, where because you've got the GTX 1070 and 1080 getting ready to come out. So I'm actually going to hold off buying a graphics card until that all sorts itself out, because my anticipation is that this card, which is a super card, is going to come down way in price. Now I can find it on eBay, brand new on eBay, in the I think it's like in the $400 range, $420 range. So I think it's even going to come down even more, especially when uh, people start, you know, companies start to want to blow out their stock because they've got 1070s and 1080s to sell. So I'm going to wait on buying a graphics card as long as I can because I know once I build this thing, I'm going to want to use it. But that's okay. And what I'm trying to do is optimize cost. When I look at this card, the capabilities of it, um, it blows away the 970. And, you know, unless the 1070, which, you know, probably is going to, I'm not, we're not sure, I'm not sure where that's going to come in once, e, you know, EVGA gets their hands on it and does their thing to it, right? And I do want to buy a graphics card that, that has some cooling applied to it, uh, like uh, and, and EVGA does a great job with that. So I do want to buy a card from them that has cooling applied to it. So it's either going to be the 980 Ti here 
or it'll be a 1070. But anyway, that's where I'm looking for, for gaming cards. I looked at the 970, and 970 is a great card, but for a couple hundred hours more, I should be able to get myself into this card and really have it a kick-ass system that's going to be VR ready in case I want to go that way or whatever I want to do. So anyway, so that's so the graphics card piece is a little bit up in the air right now, but that should be resolved just about the time you know that I start to get this system running. Now, in the meantime, for testing and everything, the motherboard has Intel graphics built in, so I can use that for testing and getting the system optimized and all that. And then once what I'll do is I'll purchase the graphics card, pop that in, and we'll be ready to go. Now, I should say I already have a Dell monitor, 24-inch monitor that I'll be using. I already have a Logitech 601 mouse that I'll be using for this system, and I did purchase a Logitech keyboard, the 501, which is not a super expensive keyboard, but I, I use mostly Xbox 360 USB gaming controller, so I'll probably be using that more than anything. So I didn't want to spend you know $170 on a gaming keyboard, since I, I don't think I really need that. I wanted to put the money more towards the core of the system. So let's talk about the cost. Now, all in all, except without the graphics card, including the new keyboard that I purchased, I spent a little over $1,000 on these components. Okay, so I'm building the base system without the graphics card for about $1,000, which is what I wanted to do. And now I'll probably budget between three and $400 for a graphics card, and I'll be able to get a kick-ass system that not only will be great for the games that are out today and the things that I play, like Train Simulator and Farming Simulator, but also for things like Rust and some of the other games that have a lot of movement in them that really require a more powerful system, and then other stuff that I can't even run on my current system, like uh, Euro fishing and some other things. So anyway, and it's sort, of, it's sort of future proofed, at least for the next couple of years, I think. Let's just say I get a 980 Ti SC from EVGA uh, in the middle of June for, let's say, 300 bucks. Okay, and then all of a sudden it's four months from now, and the prices are ridiculously low. And I find one clearance for 200 bucks. Well, now I can put two of them in there and bridge them together, and it's, it would be an unbelievable system. And that's the other thing: the motherboard that I have, if I want to go to a 67K because I want to do overclocking and stuff like that, I can go there if I want to. I think I accomplished what I want to accomplish, and I got to tell you, maybe you can tell on my voice. I'm very excited about getting these components in and starting to put this together. In any event, I've talked too much. I wanted to give you a preview of what I'm going to be building. I hope to have this stuff in-house within the next five days, and then I'll start to film that. In the meantime, I'm probably not going to be posting too many more train simulator videos because the difference between what I'm doing now and what I'm going to be able to do is going to be too ridiculous. So I'm going to hold off on that. The car mechanic, I can certainly do that because you don't really need a super powerful graphics card to play that game. So that's the system that I'm going to be putting together. Let me know what you think of this. If you have any suggestions or comments, please put them in the comments. Hit the like button if you like what you saw today. Don't forget to subscribe. And as I said, down the road, we're going to have a build video where I'm going to show you exactly how I build this system. Thanks for watching and have a great day.